What I'm planning to do today is to um, give a little context to the video installation piece that's opening very shortly um, in the gallery. Um, it's, a, it's a new piece and it's a singular piece that is a development of a body of work that I've been working on for about four years called Other Spaces. And um, it was quite interesting to think about it in the context of today and the kind of themes of this gathering, which um, is kind of focusing maybe a lot on um, the transformations brought about by the digital age. Um, and of course, I use digital technologies in my um, making process. I'm an artist. Um, I do have a love-hate relationship with them. Um, I kind of really love the possibilities for research and for access to information about fabrication and making and sharing of information. Um, but I also kind of find that with the rise of a digital culture, uh, there's an inevitable loss of certain analog materials and equipment, uh, which uh, can't be replicated in a similar way in the digital realm. Um, I work um, predominantly with photography, um, some video performance, and um, often um, installation. So although I'm predominantly lens-based, um, the physicality of my work is really important, um, and I pay great attention to the uh, materials I use and uh, the particular qualities in the prints or how I print them, the way they're mounted and framed, and the way they're grouped and installed, whether it's in a gallery or in a uh, more public place or more interactive installation. Um, just going to check that this, this works. Um, this is a book which actually will be in the gallery tonight, which is um, um, another way of disseminating um, the work, although uh, another one I struggled with. Um, but it actually um, has some of the uh, works that have already been made and shown, so um, that's the context I'm going to show you tonight. Um, my work might be uh, broadly described as an exploration of perfection. Um, I'm interested in ideas of perfection rather than perfection itself. Um, and how they uh, tend to shape us and shape the, um, the, the social interactions we have and the political systems we live in, um, but also how these in turn shape our own personal experiences and our sel sense of self. Um, and I think there's a, a link to a lot of the discussion that's been happening today about um, the relationship between public and private. Um, and, and the leakage and slippage between the two. So I'm going to um, touch on that a little bit. Um, I'm also interested in how an idea of perfection informs the history and practice of photography um, and vice versa. And so um, in this talk, I'm going to share some of my thinking and making processes, um, but drawing on this new um, body of work. So um, the project uh, evolved from my previous body of work, The Refusal, uh, which was a study of the British show whippet, um, particularly with a focus on conventions of portraiture and perfect body form, um, and also the controlling, loving relationship between human and dog. Um, I'm not going to go into the project today, but I worked with British breeders and their obsessive um, desire to breed the perfect dog. Um, and really it was... Um, I was really interested in how they measured this idea of the perfect dog. There was a written definition in the, um, the Kennel Club um, of Great Britain would describe what, um, in this case, a perfect whippet might be. Um, but also they had particular ways that they believed that we should look at a dog to know whether it was perfect or not. Um, and in this project, I explored how... Um, how um, we've contributed to the shaping of human identity through obsession with photography and the image, but also how the, pho the photograph, um, and not just the photograph, but our bodies and our minds, have changed with each new wave of technological possibility. Um, and I embrace new and emerging technologies. I think they can be a real catalyst for new ways of thinking and being. Uh, but also, they're sometimes used to disguise old ways of thinking. And um, I ran into um, a lot of the ideas I was working with. Um, genomics, which um, this project started in um, 2000, 2001, um, 
we hadn't quite cloned a sheep at that point, but it was just on the cards. But um, really how um, these contemporary practices um, had much in common with the discredited practice, for example, of eugenics. Um, so uh, I think there's also a relationship between um, the still current debate about photographic truth, and again, that was touched on today. Um, it's kind of been brought back to the fore by uh, digital imagery and how people now will discuss whether an image has been altered or not. Um, but I think the debate is equally relevant to historic analog photographs, which have always some way been translated by the artist's eye or the process of making. Um, so, um, I moved from this study of the, um, the perfect body, the perfect form of the dog, um, to the idea of a perfect performance. So in other spaces, I'm working, um, exploring the physical and emotional experiences of elite gymnasts um, in training and in competition. Um, and although I have a leaning towards lens-based media, I don't come to um, my projects with a fixed idea of how they should be made. So um, I like to work with people who are passionate about what they do and whose specialisms are often rooted in traditional popular culture. And I tend to immerse myself in their worlds to start with and take inspiration directly from the experience. Um, so my desire is always to make uh, work in the most direct and appropriate way to convey or provoke certain ideas or emotions. So I'm not especially hung up on technology. I mean, I do tend to use whatever uh, might get me to where I want to be. Um, but in the course of making this work, um, particularly the photographic work, I've come across many unwritten rules and expectations, um, lots of received ideas about how things should be done, uh, or frustrations about how, um, how an image maybe ought to be made or reproduced, um, how it might be framed or consumed um, in the market, for example. Um, so I think uh, as a result of this, um, I think, and despite the fairly classic aesthetics of my work, I think that the sub my subject matter now also includes the photograph and the conventions and traditions of photographic practice, um, many of which have a relation with ideas of perfection as well. Um, so um, this still, by the way, is um, from a performance on the opening night of um, this body of work in Wales at Mostyn Gallery. Um, and like the work with dogs, my work with the gymnast involves performance and spectacle, competition and ideas of excellence. Um, it's not a documentary, it's not an attempt to make a literal work about gymnastics. Um, it's quite important to try and locate it somewhere outside of um, the discipline. So um, in calling it other spaces, I was um, hoping to hint at that to open up this idea of public spaces and private spaces, the psychological as well as the physical, um, analog and digital, uh, terrestrial and celestial, it kind of goes off into kind of a different sphere. Um, so this is the first piece, um, A to Z, um, that uh, is seen here installed on the curved wall of the National Media Museum in Bradford in England. Um, this was my starting point. Um, uh, I gathered to get, I wanted to understand uh, not just the discipline of gymnastics, but also um, the mind of the sports photographer. Because I think um, for most of us, the way we consume photographs, uh, consume gymnastics is through um, TV, media, and sports photography. And there seemed to be a very particular way that these photographers approach the subject. Um, so all the images in this work are appropriated from archives, um, from um, contemporary um, international archives, from the official photographer to the uh, gym International Gymnastics Federation, through to um, a large number of historic archives and also kind of garnered online from um, defunct publishers such as Progress Publishing in, uh, from the Soviet Union. Um, it includes hundreds of photographs um, each clustered loosely by body form, um, but I hunted them down um, by key moves named after the gymnasts who invented them. So um, as a starting point, it was a history um, of the discipline and of the human body. Um, and for me, it was really striking when I was working with the images to see how, um, although I was looking at individual bodies, um, that it became apparent that over time, there were certain privileged shots and positions 
uh, but also certain nationalities and certain um, certain times, different ideologies and nations were much stronger than others. So um, the individuals um, came to stand in for something larger than themselves. Um, there was also um, uh, There was, um, yeah, these are some of, from my sketchbooks, some of the moves that I started hunting for um, online and in the archives. And there was a real reflection of changing world political and economic powers. Um, these were some of the books um, I got from eBay. Um, um, and this is, um, I started working on this piece digitally and um, previously I'd been very much um, a film photographer working um, with uh, medium or large format analog uh, printing everything myself, um, exploring um, old obsolete technologies in photography, stereoscopic cameras. Um, in this piece, I tended to be working from digital archives that I was given or access to online. And I actually um, started making the work on my computer. So it was a very different way to do things. And I only first saw the piece as I received the little blocks that I'd printed out on a cheap events printer and sent off to be mounted. And then we mounted them up in the museums the first time the piece came together. Um, this is the very first cluster, the women's floor work. Um, and in it, it's quite interesting to see how the shape of the gymnast's body transforms from a soft, rounded figure from the 30s to a very hard, muscular, toned, contemporary physique. But the photo photographic techniques also evolve over time um, as the different um, cameras and reproduction, reproduction techniques um, move forward. So you've got early grainy black and white, Kodachrome, Leica-made photographs, contemporary digital images. Um, this is the Azarian Cross. Um, named after the Soviet Albert Azarian's signature move on the rings. Um, he first performed this in the 50s, but it's still very current today. And um, I think the other thing that became apparent um, when I was looking at these clusters was how um, there was a real gender divide in terms of um, how uh, the male and female gymnasts were presented to the world. And even though I, uh, having been embedded with um, these gymnasts and also having been uh, many years ago a gymnast myself, I know that the, uh, the training and the rigor and the commitment is equal. Um, many, many um, hours, weeks, days, years of training to pull off one perfect or near perfect performance. And yet the, um, the male moves often are shown to be very, um, uh, they show off the power and the control um, uh, the strength of the gymnast, whereas um, in the female moves, uh, quite often the um, the difficulty is hidden. It's made to look kind of glamorous or um, uh, effortless. And I was quite interested in why that um, might be and how that might change in the future. So um, I clustered these moves together um, with gymnasts of all eras and nations. Um, this is the very first image um, of Svetlana Korkina, um, a Russian from the 90s, um, an acknowledged diva of the discipline, um, but now um, a deputy of Putin's youth commissariat. Um, she even announced just before the Russian election last year that she was going to stand against um, Putin, although that didn't actually materialize. Um, but it's a very interesting transition from um, uh, a performing um, a, a young child who trained um, in the Russian system to becoming a, a, a powerful um, youth leader in the Russian government. And then the final image in the um, installation is an image of the Aryan Alfred Schwartzman, who was um, the gold medal um, winner on the floor um, in the Berlin uh, Nazi Olympics. Um, he was a Luftwaffe pilot um, sponsored uh, directly by um, Hitler. And um, here he is holding classic pose on the floor. So I'm just very quickly uh, going to flip you through some of the installations. This was the early, um, the early uh, piece when it was made on MDF, but it's since been made under Perspex, which gives another kind of ad additional dimension to it. Um, there we have. Uh, so here you have the sense. It's 10.2 meters in length, so it's quite. Um, each image is about three inches, so they're small little. Uh, blocks. Um, and so um, the name and formal installation of the work hints at an order or a system, but it doesn't really fully materialize in the final artwork. 
Um, and you have this series of immaculate photographs of famous gymnasts performing key moves, but it's undermined by this fractured repetition of similar photographs, um, placing them in a more cultural and political context. Um, so while I was making this, I was kind of getting my head around um, how we consume and look at the discipline and how a sports photographer might. Um, interestingly, they would always go for a certain shot on a particular move, which is why it was very easy to make the piece. It was always with the... Um, um, the point of extension with the, you know, the hands or toes pointed and um, almost the body at its kind of flexible extension. Um, and it was almost as though, unless there was a complete disaster happening which would record a particular time and place, an event that happened in a competition, there was a kind of un unwritten rule that these would be the photographs which would sell. These are the photographs which you can now find. And there's um, a lot that maybe happens in between that we just don't see. Um, so while I uh, made this, I started um, visiting Heathrow Gymnastics Club, which is one of the best clubs in Britain, as a visiting artist. And I, would go, I went for about 18 months and kind of embedded myself um, in the world of the elite squad. Um, and I just I made sketches, I took camera uh, video and just uh, churned through ideas and experienced kind of how it is now to be an elite gymnast.